I think, yes, this is on. So as is the chime tradition, we will start with a few moments of silence to center in and become present to this amazing afternoon of sacred celebration. So I will ring the chime once to start the period of silence, and then I will ring it a second time to end the period of silence. So yay, and welcome to all of you, to family, to friends, to mentors, to grads, to other clergy, to spiritual companions, there's a whole group of you, and our deepest gratitude for your presence here. We are coming today to honor and support these five amazing women, Chris, Judy, Kaylee, Denise, and Linda, who have spent the last two or three years on this chime journey. They have grown into themselves as interfaith chaplains, and they have made space to the divine and said yes. I can only say to the world, watch out. Here they come. As we begin our service, I would like to offer a poem written by Rainer Rilke from his book, Love Poems to God. Because once someone dared to want you, I know that we too may want you. When gold is in the mountain and we've ravaged the depths till we've given up the digging, it will be brought forth into day by the river that mines the silence of the stones. Even when we don't desire it, God is ripening. Namaste. Good afternoon again. It's great joy to look out and see all of you and meet some of you as you are coming in to um, celebrate these beautiful women over here, spirit-filled. I'm Patricia Ellen. I've been the abbess of Chime almost since its inception. And I'm still here 16 years later because it's such an amazing community. And um, our grads and our ordinands and our ordinands to come are an inspiration and bring great hope in these times. Chime, if you don't already know it, is an interfaith wisdom school. We believe that each of you, each of us, is born with unique gifts to share with the world. We believe that each of us has our own special way to respond to the divine invitation to be in relationship and in service. Just recently, um, 
I came across a quote from our founder, Jacob Watson. This is how he described the philosophy of CHIME and what we stand for. CHIME provides a mindful home for deep exploration of self. We investigate not only the heart of wisdom, but also how participation in the search together can inform and inspire our lives of service. And I really highlight together because it's as students journey with each other and are supported and honored, that is such a beautiful thing. In the first year, our students are asked to look deeply into their souls, so their chaplaining is grounded in self-awareness, and we don't transfer our messy stuff to somebody else. In the second year, the way of action, students learn skills for reaching out by being a caring presence, creating rituals that are unique to bring meaning to your life's passages, developing a prophetic voice that not only can be a voice for the voiceless, but to speak in such a way that helps bridge, build bridges, which we so sorely need in this world today. And finally, through the use of music, dance, art, poetry, not only for themselves, but in helping others use that as a pathway to experience the mystery of the divine. Now, if you're a numbers person, you might be wondering how, how this all happens. In the two, to two years the students are in the initial program, they're in classes for 500 hours. They provide at least 300 hours of service to the community. Some of the students being ordained today have done much more than that. And indulge in countless hours in reading, reflection, and spiritual practice. These five women being ordained today, as Katie said, has said yes to the call to make spirit the foundation of their life. And we all celebrate with them. I'm sure all of you, some of you are gonna celebrate having them back after not going to school for two years or three. So I hope in some way this ordination not only honors them, but can inspire each of you to find your gift and your way of walking in kindness, compassion, and celebration with those people who cross your path. Blessed be. My name is Craig Worth. I have had the great honor of serving as a faculty advisor during the past year working mostly with the first year students. I was ordained by Chime myself as an interfaith chaplain uh, a year ago in this very space. And that means that I had the honor and privilege of walking as a fellow student with the three wonderful women who are being presented today. Five. Five. Magnificent. It's almost like too, too many to take in. They're so, so beautiful. Uh, in a few moments, I'm going to be, uh, have the opportunity to invite each of them up to deliver um, her ordination speech. Before that, uh, we want to invite you to share a song with us. If you have uh, one of the orders of service or programs with you, there's a little insert of some words. Um, Music and song are among the many art forms that we hold dear in chime. Sonic vibration has the capacity to unite us in so many ways. We've experienced that together many times over. If you were ever told that you cannot sing, that is not true. All voices are welcome today. 37 different pitches would be welcome today as we make a beautiful noise. Uh, please stand in body and or spirit. Um, 
our first year student Seth and his music partner Melissa will play this uh, beautiful song through once and then we invite you to sing with us. Please be seated. Christina, Judy, Kaylee, Denise, and Linda were each given the significant challenge, and I know this for myself, of representing her two or three year spiritual journey with Chime in a two minute presentation. Imagine that. Less is more we often heard from our leaders on this journey. The process of distilling and condensing our stories and messages provides us the opportunity for deep reflection, for unfolding and unfurling, for new discovery as well as discernment, and valuable practice with our attempts to deliver big, beautiful, and wondrous gifts in small packages as we strive to serve others. I will call up each of the ordinands to deliver her message. The order is random, numbers chosen from the singing bowl of chime. We will hear from three of them, have a musical interlude, and follow that with the remaining two graduate presentations. First, Christina Davis. Lucky draw. <laughs> Hi. It's good to be here. It's an incredible gift to have traveled this road and to be witnessed as I accept ordination into interfaith ministry. I came to Chime to put my spiritual life on the top shelf to give it more attention and daily care. My time here has been very well spent. In the couple of minutes allotted me, um, I'd like to share with you all as witness my personal theology that gives my life meaning and direction. I believe that we are here to experience ourselves as creators in physical form. I am perfect. So are you. Though most of us have forgotten this, we are all being called to realize our ultimate oneness with all that is, our holy creative force. Becoming conscious 
of the powerful creators that we are, thoughts and actions can create more beautifully and intentionally. We can cut down on the tragedy here, thought by thought, action by action. I, no more and no less than an expression of God, have chosen this physical form. I've agreed to come here. And then I forgot everything. <laughs> when I breathed my first breath and commenced my journey as compacted spirit here in my physical suit. I've learned that centering, centering prayer and ritual are powerful practices that connect me to my creative force, to offerings that can otherwise be hard for me to locate here on this dense physical plane. The earth is vibrantly alive and incredibly intelligent. I am both a visitor and akin to her. I am moving mountain. I am standing tree. Everything I think and do matters to this incredible web of creation. At the same time, evil is here in me and I am capable of every earthly expression, including this one which I recoil from most strongly. Every possibility is here for each of us to draw from, depending on our consciousness, our circumstances, and our choices. If I could stand back far enough, as I will when I leave this plane, everything will make sense, even suffering. Suffering is part of this journey and connects me deeply to compassion and to my capacity for healing. Suffering insists that I explore life's innate darkness. Beauty and pain are portals to pure spirit and to places beyond the knowable. I aspire to sit with them both and allow them to guide and inform me. I don't know how it all works. But I feel that nothing will ever exist here that is outside of perfection. Every act is an either an expression of love or a call for love, as Marianne Williamson has shared. As much as I continue to look away from and cover my ears from atrocities, I know that they are born from the same source of creative energies and the greatest acts of love, that the greatest acts of love and generosity arise from. Lastly, it is my greatest desire moving forward to satiate my hunger, to fully accept life's bookends of birth and beauty, suffering and death with a heart that's broken open. I aim to partner with the divine and all I meet to make as much joyful and spirited commotion as possible in between and among those awesome bookends. I'm grateful to Chime and to the beautiful people here and beyond these walls that I will no doubt keep calling on as I continue to create my spiritual journey. Thank you. Right up, Judy Graham. Thanks, Craig. Um, I want to start today by saying that I've been uh, very lucky in life. I've been very lucky with my life partner. I've been very lucky with my three, now five children, and my two grandchildren. Um, and I've been very lucky to find um, Chime. This Chaplaincy Institute, this Interfaith Chaplaincy Institute. I want to talk a little bit about faith, not just interfaith, but faith. Faith has gotten a kind of a, 
faith has gotten kind of a bad rep lately. Thanks, Angie. Um, it, some of us hear faith and think blind faith and have lost sort of the discernment that uh, is part of all of us. So I've started substituting trust. I like that word quite a bit. But when I am having those long conversations with myself and I am open to the words that come, the, com the word that comes most frequently these days is opening. It's open. Many faith leaders talk about opening, opening. Is that working? One's mind, one's body, and one's heart. And the importance of all three of those being open at once and aligned. Well, I can tell you that when I made a decision to come to Chime, I was not thinking about my body or my heart. I was fully in my mind, and I wanted answers. <laughs> and none of you here today who are familiar with Chime will be surprised at all that I didn't get them. <laughs> right? But my mind spent a glorious two years romping through faith traditions and spiritual concepts trying things on for a bit, discerning what resonates with me, and just as importantly, what does not, all the while becoming more and more open to the beauty of unknowing, open to the gorgeous richness of mystery. And the body, oh, the body. When I arrived at Chime, I was so disconnected from my body that I would walk around for days like this, what, who, me, stressed? No, I got this, I'm just gonna plow ahead until some kind soul would tell me my shoulders were up around my ears, right? Through the love, the patience of chime and the people in chime, I've slowly learned to listen to the wisdom of my body and honor the sacred signals that are being shared. I learned, too, that I could recognize and respect the very real, physically experienced, self-emptying, waiting, listening, longing for the divine. My heart, many say that the heart is the most difficult to open. It's hard to get through life, especially 60 plus years of life, without some wounding to the feeling function. One could say that the beautiful spiritual concepts that we've learned at Chime have healing powers, and I think that that's true. But what has mostly healed me, what has healed me and opened my heart, is the unfettered love at Chime, the unfettered love of my gorgeous classmates, my beloved sisters, the abbess, the dean, the faculty, the love. So chime in ways that I don't fully understand and that seem almost magical as I look back on them has done this for me. In a few minutes, when I'm asked, are you ready? I will answer yes. But what I'll really be saying is yes. Body and heart. I am. Gift. Thank you. Kaylee Bird Isis. It's a little high for me. Let me know. So hello, I'm so happy to be here. I don't have an ordination speech. What I have is an ordination prayer. So I'm going to use the chime bell. Am I ready? I had a dream last night that into the hands of the abbess I offered 10 diamonds. 
she asked me, are you ready? Am I ready? I bring stillness. I bring silence. Not complicit silence, but the silence of the heart, the expansion of the heart. I bring compassion, compassion of the self for all I need to forgive, compassion for the world. I bring awareness, I bring awareness and action to the dangerous devastation of my sacred earth. I bring love. I bring a loving tenderness to all of life. I bring intention to do my best to show up. And I bring deep gratitude to Chime for allowing me this journey and for all of you to be here and witness it for me and for all of us. Thank you. Reverend Stan Barrett will share with us a, f a flute piece from the Hindu culture and tradition. Islamic. Islamic. It's the Islamic culture and tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Stan. <laughs>
Thank you. Before I um, invite up our remaining two ordinands, I just want to make mention that um, Spirit has given us all a gift today by helping me demonstrate that perfection is not a qualification <laughs> for membership in the Chime community. In fact, imperfection may be, and it was, was one of my top qualities. <laughs> Thank you for that beautiful piece from the Islamic tradition. I will now invite up Denise Van Voren. There is only one reason to do anything as a statement to the universe of who you are. From the book Conversations with God, this quote was attached to every bulletin board, every computer monitor, every refrigerator, every wallet I own for 20 years. It has reminded me to aspire to authenticity and integrity and strive to create purposeful action in my life. Only one reason to do anything. So let's hold that thought for one second. On our second day of convocation each fall, after a day of soul-searching exercises, CHIME students invest alone, time alone in discernment, contemplation, and writing to consider, what is my spiritual path? Do I have a calling? Where would that calling be? And then later, encircled by a crowded room full of CHIME graduates, we're embraced and blessed as we stand before the larger CHIME community. And for me, this is a most serious, humble, moving, clarifying, and sacred moment to publicly affirm my heartfelt vow for the coming year before and among this amazing community that I love and honor. My first vow, with gratitude and humility, I pledge my wholehearted presence. My second year vow, welcoming the gift of grace, I embrace awe and mystery. And they reflect a heart opening and evolving spiritual journey, a striving to be truly present and embracing the experience that presence offers. And every time I push myself to be brave, to allow myself to be vulnerable, authentic, connected, and open, it feels like I'm reclaiming my vows and then renewing my purpose. Reciting them gives me strength, reinforces my determination, and reminds me of the joy of this journey, a deepening connection to my spiritual self, and growing wonder at divine presence that's known by so many names. Through two years of numberless aha moments in workshops and classes and through volunteering and amazing conversations with honored and trusted instructors, mentors, and my fellow chime seekers around questions of life, of love, and the great mysteries of spirit, I've come to a realization. I still like that quote I held on to for 20 years for a reason. Only one reason to do anything. It led me to helpful contributions through life that I'm proud of. And yet, there was often more than just a little bit of ego in that. And they had not brought me to a soul-satisfying place. Action and compassionate service to others can be noble and is necessary for sure. And in fact, it's a big part of what chaplains are called to do. The shift for me will be to continually learning that serving as a chaplain is about getting out of my own way. It's so not about me. And trusting spirit to guide my heart. It's about being within the mystery and offering my presence as I accompany others on their journey. And so to this new vow, I am once again humbled and offered to offer my solemn and heartfelt Namaste.
And finally, for today, five of five, Linda Card. So those of you who know me, know me, know that I'm of the let's just wing it school. So um, here's my speech <laughs> on the back of something that I just wrote. Um, I am the third year student in, in this group. It took me a bit longer than my, my classmates to get here. And people will sometimes say, how did you end up going to Chime? And I was going through a particularly sad time in life, and I was actually kneeling in my garden, I was praying, I was pulling weeds, and crying, and just asking God to please show me a way, show me a path, what am I supposed to do with my life now, when everything I thought it would be, is, is, it's not going to be. And just as clear as a bell, I heard in my mind, chime. And I looked up skyward, I gave the thumbs up, and I went, got it. And in less than three weeks, I was at convocation. <laughs> um, so I entered not really knowing what to expect, just figuring that when God says something, you do it. Um, and there I was. Um, it was a, a rough journey it, at first. There was a lot going on uh, in my life. So I would say the greatest thing I've learned in my time is to silence myself, to trust, to meditate every day. It's for you, Angie. <laughs> um, and to not be afraid of, of being alone, not be afraid of my own company. Also for you, Angie. <laughs> um, and I find now that I even get up in the morning, and yes, I do make my cup of coffee first, but a lot of times I will just go and sit in silence and just listen to the birds. Um, listen to the chipmunks that make a lot of noise outside my window. And I wouldn't have done that prior to coming to Chime. The other thing I've learned is that I certainly can't control a lot of the things that happen in my life. All I can control is my response to them. And I hope and I know I've made a great deal of progress on that. Um, I did bring with me some talismans today. During my, right before I started Chime, I lost my mom. In March this year, I lost my dad. I did bring one of my favorite pictures of them with me. I want them here so much. My yellow dress is in honor of my friend Gail Rice who lost her battle with cancer in 2014 and asked us all to wear yellow to her funeral. And this is her funeral dress. And I will be ordained today with a stole that belonged to my friend Amy Ruth Ginsburg Tilly, who also lost her life in 2014. And I believe that all of those people are here right now with me. Amy used to send me books by Hafiz and Rumi and others, and I would look at them and go, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm quite sure she's having a big laugh wherever she is right now at this moment. I want to thank all of you for your patience, to Patricia, to Katie, to Angie, to Craig, to Kathy, even though I hated the art projects, Kathy, you know. <laughs> I really did hate those. Um, but I got through them, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> um, but it's been a wonderful journey. And I do feel now that I'm part of this beloved community. 
to my initial classmates, I had to write names so I wouldn't forget, um, Deirdre, Jeffrey, Craig, John, Noni, and Tom, and to the people with whom I'm being ordained this year, Chris, Judy, Kaylee, and Denise, and to my third year classmates, um, Diana, Abby, and Casey, you are all wonderful, and I look forward to being at the ordination next year of our fabulous 20 first year students and the ladies I just mentioned. Thank you so much for everything. It has been quite a journey, and now I need a job. So if anyone, <laughs> truly, I have a resume in my car. I'm dead serious. So <laughs> I could have that for you in just a moment. <laughs> So thank you all so much. Namaste. <laughs> Hello. My name is Kathy Grigsby. I am the art director <laughs> at Chime. You're on my list, Linda. No, I'm used to that. There are a lot of people who come to Chime art phobic and like Craig said, everybody can sing, everybody can do art. So, but right now I'm going to invite you to join me in a little movement because we don't often sit for long periods of time in Chime. And um, this is a little opening the heart exercise. It's from the Sufi tradition, which is the um, more mystical branch of Islam. And it's very easy to follow along. You can, I will show you how it goes. Um, ya Fatah is the name of this exercise. And Ya Fatah means opening or to be opened. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go through it three times. And at the end, I will say, and you can join me if you want to, alhamdulillah, which is Arabic for there is no God but God. So I'm going to invite you all to stand up. Feel better? Yeah. So we're about to move into ordination. And um, I want to talk just a little bit about ordination and what it means, and um, then give you some opportunities as part of this. So ordination is a holy sacrament. But what we also know, as I walk with students year after year, is that what we do here publicly actually very often is a recognition of a commitment that they made many years before, a commitment to live a life of service. So, and then finally, the ordination, as we do it today, it says, we have walked with these women for two years. We have, they, we've talked to their spiritual companions, their supervisors, we've listened to them in class, we've laughed with them, we've played with them, We've learned with them, we've learned from them as well as them from us, and that we are ready to recognize their work, their skills, their heart, and their spiritual commitment. A little bit about in the interfaith tradition, which is the lineage which they are, these students are being ordained into, the tradition is the school is the one that ordains, and the community you as family and friends that call them into service. So they're, they're making themselves available to the whole community and we find 
time after time that it's, it's when you recognize it and call them into service that they're reordained each time. That being said, since you're all a big part of this, we have a couple of offerings. So we're gonna be calling the women up one by one to be ordained. We're gonna, in just a minute, invite um, anybody who's ordained or a spiritual leader in their faith tradition that would like to be up here and participate in the laying on of hands to come up. And um, for those of you who will be staying in your seats, we offer you the opportunity after each person is ordained to send a blessing with your hands, energetically, with a prayer, or just silently from your seat so that all of us will be recognizing the ordination. So right now I invite um, ordained clergy and spiritual leaders in your own tradition, and we leave that to you to define, to come up, on the, up here with us.
Good afternoon. <laughs> I have a few things to share with you before um, we do a talus blessing and the priestly blessings. First of all, I'd like to talk about what I'm wearing. Um, in all past years, I've worn a suit. And a few months ago, I was at a special birthday party of 85th uh, birthday of a friend, and I honored her and felt it was right to wear this. And a lot of people asked me, well, what are you wearing? What's that all about? And I shared with them, and it made me think, you know, I should be wearing this to ordination. Because what this is about is an auction item at a chime auction <laughs> years back. <laughs> and I really loved it. I thought, boy, that's really cool. I got to have that. So I stood right by it and made sure I had the last bid in. And <laughs> I, I got it. And then I went up to the person who donated it and I asked her, tell me about that. What do you know about it? And she said, the only thing I know about it it was my dad's, and he called it his prayer jacket. Okay. So, um, as I said, we're going to do a talus blessing, um, Jewish for prayer shawl. And I don't know this as an absolute fact, but it seems logical to me that the stoles is um, a continuation, outgrowth of the talus. A Jewish boy or girl, young man or young woman, um, gets their talis and starts to wear it when they're bar or bat mitzvah. And what is happening at bar and bat mitzvah is this person is now recognized as taking full personal responsibility for their spiritual path. And the parents are told, you're off the hook now. So faculty and staff, you're off the hook now. Okay. The other thing that happens, usually after receiving the talis um, and the blessing that goes with it, which we're about to do, um, is the saying of the priestly blessings with the particular hand motion that goes with that, which is this. Now, does anybody recognize that? <laughs> Leonard Nimoy, Spock. So they asked Bach before the show started being filmed, um, you need to come up with some kind of a, a greeting more than, what, what's, what does he say? You live long and prosper, is that it? Yeah. So he, he's a Jewish guy, grew up in an observant family. And he said, oh, yeah, I know a, a, a thing. And this is what the priests, the Kohanim, the Kohanes, um, would bless the people with at um, meaningful occasions. So um, I will be doing that when I say the priestly blessings. A particular practice coming out of um, a little more mystical side of Judaism for putting on the talus is after saying the prayer and holding it over your head, you reflect. And um, I'll be resharing the reflection that I do when the talus is held over the ordinance heads. And then I will be singing the prayer for putting on the talus. There is no tune for this prayer. It's never sung, except at chime ordination. <laughs> <laughs> and this came about with a, an early ordinant, Reverend Anna Smolowitz, a wonderful singer, actress, director, playwright, um, who liked drama and you know, strong experience. She said, I got to come up with a song for this and in the cantorial kind of style. So I'm a fill-in today for Anna. She wasn't able to be here today. Um, 
I think I've covered what I need to cover. So if the people who are going to hold up the talus over the ordinance could do that now, it's right there. So ordinance reflecting on that you're under the wing of God's protection, compassion, guidance, and love this moment and in going forth in your ministry. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kirshanu b'mitzvot ha'ov V'tivanu, v'tivanu, v'tivanu Lehitzatev, lehitzatev, lehitzatev. Lehitzatev batzit. Amen. Put the dots down now. You can rest your arms now. <laughs> and I'd like to share with you that I have a, I'm a hospice chaplain. I have a 104-year-old patient who every time I say amen, she says, and women too. Priestly blessings. <laughs> um, you may be familiar with them from Church Dead or synagogue you attend. Uh, my version is a little different, so just be prepared for that. My name is Sue Clark, and it's a great privilege to be here with you today and to join our dean and our abbess in what comes next, which is the presentation of not only CHIME's Certificate of Pastoral Authority, but also other gifts. Before we do that, I want to thank all of you for your presence with us today. We have board members, we have current students, alums, friends, family. All of you helped make the CHIME family. All of you have done what you can to support our ordinance today, and we're grateful. I also want to take a moment on behalf of the board to thank our remarkable staff who are so dedicated in so many ways in bringing together the creative program that CHIME offers, and we could not do it without them either. And I would ask all of you to... And speaking to each of our ordinands, Linda, Judy, Chris, 
Haley and Denise, an extraordinary group of women indeed. We want to thank you for the ways you have graced Chime and the ways surely you will grace our world. May you go forth knowing you will always be a part of the Chime family, and may your ministries in our world continue to bring joy and solace, healing, freedom, and what Judy described as an opening of the heart to so many. Surely you will bring much skill and sensitivity, integrity, and continued presence to those you serve. We love you. So now, you're going to, oh, uh, it's my turn to muff up here. Um, my pleasure is to present the certificates of pastoral authority and um, the other gifts are gonna be described next. We always say at our events that we plan them and then spirit kind of intervenes. So you've seen spirit's been having fun with us today. The, um, the gift I'm gonna be giving the students is a cloth that has been specially chosen with the wisdom of Katie and Craig and myself. And the reason for the cloth is that we recognize that they are co-creators with the divine and it's an invitation to them to use this cloth in whatever way, whether it's to wrap up in, whether to comfort someone, whether to dance with, whether to make a costume out of, only their imagination will uh, make it. And it's always a reminder that the divine is inviting them to create and play. And I'm going to be giving them these beautiful wooden begging bowls that has chime on the back. And many people know them as uh, practical things that are used often by Buddhist monks to hold out and ask for support. Um, but it also is a symbol of non-attachment. And so I want to suggest that it's the non-attachment that allows us to really open up to spirit and to be, open up our hearts to the work that we're, we're called to do. So I give them these, these bowls as a reminder of your saying yes once again and your non-attachment allowing you to really stay open with your hearts to the people and the communities around you. Christina M. Davis. Dr. Judy F. Graham. Haley Bird Isis. Denise Van Boren.
Linda Susan Card. everyone is the 2018 class at Chime and let's offer them a wonderful enthusiastic congratulations. <laughs> I'm Angie Arndt, class of 2007, and I had the great honor and pleasure of walking with these women through their first year at Chime, and so I'm tickled that I was invited to come and be the grand finale. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I gotta tell you though, after all this time, it's still nerve-wracking to get up here. <laughs> oh, 11 years ago, I sat where, where these ladies are, and it's like it was yesterday. And I've had just such a pleasure to journey with Chime, which is why my opening line that I prepared is, I love Chime. <laughs> really, I love Chime. Why? Because, and I quote Mary Oliver, what I want in my life is to be willing to be dazzled. And today, we have been dazzled and not just by Linda's fantastic dress, either. <laughs> I love Chime. Why? Because it is the container that allows amazing transformation to happen. These five modern-day mystics have shown us what it looks like when one puts their gifts to work to meet a greater need. We are in the midst of wonder. I'll say that again. We are in the midst of wonder. They have healed themselves as well as those they have shared their gifts with through powerfully healing poetry, Kaylee, brave conversations about death, Denise, diving in and facilitating community conversations around tough topics, Chris, taking the recovery model to a whole new creative expression, Judy, and having the courage to show up for a dying friend and transforming her world into a healing space while transforming your own heart, Linda. You are all amazing, helping to change the world through your courage, your perseverance, vulnerability, and authenticity. <laughs> I, too, love your willingness to say yes to your callings, and I thank you. I would like to offer you a personal benediction, and I didn't plan this with Katie, but I'm quoting Rilke as well. If the angel deigned to come, it will be because you have convinced her, not by tears, but by your humble resolve to always be a beginner. Don't forget, this is just the beginning. Blessings on all you have done to get to this point in your journeys and blessings all that is to come your way because you have chosen to say yes to your calls. 
What a beautiful gift you are to the world. So again, thank you for saying yes. And to all who've shown up in support of these wonderful women, I borrow from the Unitarian Universalist tradition this the following benediction. For those who came here seeking God, may God go with you. For those who came embracing life, may life return your affection. For those who came to seek a path, may a way be found and the courage to take it step by step. Namaste.